Major breaking news in federal court today, the Illinois state ban on so-called assault weapons and magazines that hold more than 10 rounds have been declared unconstitutional under the Second Amendment by a federal judge. This is massive news. Stay tuned. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Box of Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and New York Times bestselling author. If you haven't subscribed to the Four Box of Diner, please do so, show your love for the right to keep in your arms. Okay folks, this is huge news, huge news. Judge, federal judge Steve McGlynn in the United States District Court for the Southern District of Illinois has just issued a major order, which I will link to down below, that says that the Illinois State Assault Weapon Ban, which bans semi-automatic rifles, and their ban on so-called large capacity magazines, which is, you know, our standard capacity magazines, are unconstitutional. The laws are unconstitutional and may not be enforced. Specifically, Judge McGlynn has enjoined the enforcement of this law because it violates the Second Amendment. Now, we're probably going to do a couple videos on this, so I'm going to hit the highlights today to get the key points out. Then we'll break it down in more detail later. The first thing is that Judge McGlynn did an excellent job with the textual analysis because he limited it to just textual issues, meaning the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. He specifically understood, understandably, correctly articulated that arms includes not just firearms, but anything that assists firearms in you know, performing correctly and aiming accurately and all of, of the above, which includes, among other things, the various features and parts that the anti-gunners don't like. Judge McGlynn said that on a textual basis, the word arms includes semi-automatic rifles as well as things like magazines. Specifically, he wrote, quote, the court agrees that magazines are arms as used in the plain text of the Second Amendment. Plaintiffs are correct that this is not even a close call. That is not my language. That is Judge McGlynn's. This is what I've been saying for all along, that semi-automatic rifles are clearly arms because they're firearms, and magazines and other things that go along to help the firearm shoot accurately are indeed arms arms because they assist in the performance and use and facilitation of the use of modern firearms for all lawful purposes, including but not limited to self-defense. Beyond that, Judge McGlynn talked about the so-called assault weapon ban. He said specifically uh, that these arms uh, that, that arms, to, and to the extent that features or whatnot, help improve the accuracy and reliability of these arms. Uh, these all constitutes the meaningful exercise of the right to arm self-defense, and therefore anything that helps the firearms perform as firearms or to improve accuracy and the like is, again, protected by the text of the Second Amendment and presumptively protected, uh, and the burden shifts, of course, to the government to demonstrate, among other things, these are not protected arms, which for all intents and purposes, when it comes to magazines today and semi automatic rifle study is simply impossible given their commonality and their ubiquitous nature in this country. The next thing is that Judge McGlynn talks about the history here. He says, quote, Bruin clearly holds the Second Amendment protects possession and use of weapons in common use, not just weapons in common use for self-defense. Did you hear what Judge McGlynn just said, folks? The same thing we've been talking about on the Four Boxes Diner channel for many months has been captured in a single sentence by federal Judge McGlynn. This, again, is what he wrote. He draws that distinction, which the anti-gunners were trying to make, right? The anti-gunners were trying to amend the in-common-use test to say that we, then the Second Amendment community, have to show that AR-15s that hold more than 10 rounds, or AR-15s, as well as magazines that hold more than 10 rounds, are commonly used for self-defense, but that's not the test. The test is, are they in common use by Americans for lawful purposes, which means, are they owned and possessed? And again, Judge McGlynn specifically caught this distinction. He rejected, he rejected the arguments by the anti-gunners and the state of Illinois and writes again, quote, Bruin clearly holds that the Second Amendment protects possession and use, possession and use of weapons in common use, not just weapons in common use for self-defense. But even if it were so limited, he goes on to say that the AR-15 would clearly qualify because so many Americans buy these specifically for self-defense purposes. He cites to all the data. This is a no-brainer. We all understand this. The next thing, of course, Judge McGlynn points out, he correctly, 100% correctly rejects considering assault weapons to be a category and simply asks the same question that Judge Brett Kavanaugh, when he was on the D.C. Circuit back in the day, talked about in the case of Heller too, which we've talked about on this channel, Judge McGlynn specifically says that assault weapons are not a unique category. The question is simply whether semi-automatic firearms, semi-automatic rifles are in common use, okay? And that's the standard. 
And he says, obviously, they're in common use and they're protected. That assault weapons is conceptually a simply a propaganda term. We've talked about this before. And Judge McGlynn clearly saw through this. It was pretty obvious. He then goes on to talk about, uh, and this is a critical point. I have hammered on Twitter at, at Four Boxes Diner. That's at Four Boxes Diner. If you're not following me on Twitter, you should do so. And on this channel, I've hammered this point. I've hammered this point in speeches to the Federalist Society. I've hammered this point uh, on TV, on radio, anywhere I could talk about it. The point is this. If, under the Heller Supreme Court decision, if an arm is in common use by Americans today, it is protected, period, full stop. There is no second step. There's no other step. There's nothing else that needs to be done or can be done. It is protected. And I'm happy to report that Judge McGlynn got this right. He specifically writes that commonality is dispositive, dispositive, and therefore he limits his discussion of historical analogs to a couple paragraphs just to touch that base, which makes sense because district court judges do touch bases because they often get appealed. But the bottom line is, again, it's dispositive in the sense that because these magazines that hold more than 10 rounds and because these semi-automatic rifles are indeed commonly used by Americans for lawful purposes in millions and millions of numbers, they are protected, period, full stop. They cannot be banned. I just want to give you a couple great quotes from this court opinion. I'll link to it down below. Again, in no particular order, Judge McGlynn says that he finds that defendants' arguments that magazines are not arms is unpersuasive. He says specifically that the Seventh Circuit has recognized the Second Amendment as extending to corollaries, that's corollaries, to the meaningful exercise of the core right of, to possess firearms for self-defense. He goes on, and this is a great quote from Judge McGlynn, quote, it is hard to imagine something more closely correlated to the right to use a firearm in self-defense than the ability to effectively load ammunition into the firearm. Powerful evidence. Then he goes on to point out that the defendant's own expert defined high capacity firearms as handheld arms with a capacity greater than 10 rounds, recognizing that the Illinois statute allows up to 15 rounds for handguns. Specifically, what he's saying is that obviously the defendant's expert basically has agreed that these arms, as well as these magazines, are indeed arms. And he points that out right here. That's what Judge McGlynn does. I also want to make a point here. There is a huge section here on page 19 about pistol braces. This is a very big deal. We're going to break this down more in a separate video, but he specifically talks about pistol braces being protected under the Second Amendment. This is what Judge McGlynn writes. The Illinois statute, which he refers to as PICA, also interferes with the meaningful exercise of Second Amendment rights for a group of individuals, those with disabilities, those with disabilities. To provide one example, consider arm braces for semi-automatic pistols. Bing, 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 bing. Did you hear what I just said? To provide one example, consider arm braces for semi-automatic pistols. As noted above, the Illinois statute prohibits the use of an arm brace for any, on any semi-automatic pistol with a detachable magazine without any caveat or exceptions. Now listen to what he just says. He goes on to say, the Department of Justice has also attempted to regulate possession and registration of arms braces. He goes on to say that the BATF, that's the ATF, has recognized such braces are necessary for those with disabilities to use a firearm by directing that this rule does not affect stabilizing braces that are objectively designed and intended as a stabilizing brace for use with individuals with disabilities. Okay, so to summarize here, we'll talk about this video, this, this, this opinion more in future videos. The bottom line is that Judge McLean has found that the ill Illinois state ban on so-called assault weapons, which are semi-automatic rifles and magazines, is unconstitutional under the Second Amendment. He writes a very powerful decision. The fundamental point of his is the thing we've talked repeatedly about this channel, which says, again, if these are arms, which they clearly are for reasons we've talked about, and they're in common use by Americans, which they clearly are because millions of people own these things, they cannot be banned. And specifically, I want to make, make sure you are the smartest person in the room because you are, if you listen to this channel, I will help make you the smartest person in the room when it comes to the Second Amendment. He specifically points out that in Caetano, only 200,000 stun guns were viewed as in common use. And he then goes on to say, tell me if this sounds familiar to you fans of the Fort Boxes Diner. He goes on to say that those that own magazines and semi-automatic rifles own these in orders of magnitude greater numbers than those that ever owned and possessed stun guns and sights to Caetano versus Massachusetts 2016. Okay, folks, hope you learned a little bit of something here today about the case of Barnett versus Rowell and all the related things that Judge uh, McGlynn wrote about. I'm going to put an opinion down below so you can check it out. If you haven't subscribed to the Four Boxes Diner or follow me on Twitter at at Four Boxes Diner, please do so, and we'll see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.